good care. Um, right, well, let's get one thing straight. It's not rocket science. It's about good communication skills and respect. I love my job. I do. Really love it. My mates take the piss. You know, how can you love wiping old folks' asses? And yes, I do do that. But it's so much more. I'm on 6.30 an hour, which my granddad goes mental about. He used to work down the pit and it's, it's a disgrace that carers are on a pittance when those who have brought the country to its knees are ruining millions. I say, Grandad, it's not about the money. I do my job for nothing. Aye, and that's just what the buggers will have you doing if you don't stand up for yourself. He certainly knows how to ruin a 21st birthday party. Maybe I should slap a bit of lemon balm on him. <laughs> Calm him down. Here, have a whiff. It's gorgeous. Dead fresh. I use it on the clients. I massage the hands. They love it. I was um, given this by some wife I met on a course. Thought she was a bit odd at first, you know, hippy trippy. Well. She may have looked like she'd read at a Trump's jumble sale, but it turns out she's a professor and she's been doing some sciencey type research into herbal remedies for people with dementia. And, well, she gave us this. I said, you know, we don't have budget for out like that, but she wasn't after any money. She said, just try it and let her know how I get on. And do you know what it is? I swear to God, the residents seem calmer. Maybe I'm just imagining it, you know, looking for signs, but, well, that's what good nursing's all about. Not that I'm a nurse. Not clever enough. Never passed one exam. I always wanted to be a nurse. Or a vet, like, from the day me and my granddad watched the Grand National. You know, um, how they have the build-up on, interviewing loads of people? Well, there was this wife on, a trainer, and she used to nurse sick racehorses back to health. She said that the secret to our success was observation and patience. And, well, I didn't really know what she meant at the time, but I do now. It's the same with old folk, you know, a lot of them can't communicate, so it's about observing, reading the signs. Are they happy? Are, are they in pain, uncomfortable? Then you try different things to get them right back on track. I mean, they're never going to win the Grand National, but um, they might be able to watch it on the TV, even have a little flutter, like Ethel. I love Ethel, and Ethel loves horse racing. The sport of kings. She's dead posh. Apparently her dad used to be a boogie. Reckons that's where she got her brains from. I say, e Ethel, how do you love maths? Keeps one's mind as sharp as a razor just smile and nod. She repeats herself a lot. It's the dementia. Um, I pretend like I'm hearing it for the first time. There's no point telling her. She'd only get distressed and... And well, my job's to keep her calm, safe and happy. When she's happy, when she's watching the racing. So every Saturday, I'll read out the runners from the Daily Mirror and she'll pick the ones that she wants to back. I'll ring my granddad and he'll stick on an accumulator for her. Only a pound. I mean, uh, strictly speaking, I shouldn't do it. The, um, the new boss doesn't like it, but... Well, that's another story. Ethel's not very well at the moment. Um, just very poorly. Had a bad fall in the bathroom, broken hip. She's got Louis body dementia, so if she's having a bad day, she can be unsteady on her feet. Hence the fall. Oh, I saw. She never gets any visitors. Our son lives in Australia. Just because you have kids, it's no guarantee that they're going to look after you. This place has taught me that much. Don't get me wrong, I don't blame the families. People have their own lives to lead in. Well, our residents need specialist care and they get that here. What people don't realise is that good care isn't all about the money. It's about the people. 
it's people that make a difference. The way I see it, I treat all the residents in here as I would be granted. It's as simple as that, really. Because of all these um, cuts, we've had less money for nice things like arts and crafts. Thank God for Channel 4 racing. <laughs> so, anyway, getting back to my story, Ethel's picked out our four horses and my granddad had placed the bet. Me and Ethel were in the lounge watching the racing. This all happened before our four. Well, didn't the first two horses win? Stacy's choice at 16 to 1, bless her. She'd only picked that one because of me. I told her it had no chance, but she insisted. It's not about the money. She said that just before she picked her next horse. Big bucks. <laughs> that made us laugh. Anyway, he was certainly a 10 to 1 on. Hardly worth including him in the bet, really, but she said it reminded her of her dad. So, an outsider and a red-hot favourite have already romped home. The bet is well and truly on. The third horse to race is Bobsworth. I should picked him because her husband's name was Robert. I'll be seeing him later. I smile and think, not unless you visit in the cemetery you won't pet. Anyway, doesn't Bobsworth go and win it at five to one? Ethel is delighted, it's so am I. If the next horse wins, Ethel could be set to collect big style. 561 pounds to be precise. That's nearly a month's wages to me. Ethel always works out the winnings beforehand, that's part of the activity. Anyway, Junior's the fourth horse in the accumulator. He's four to one and he's running at Newcastle. So I think, well, that's got to be a good omen. But the chances of four horses winning are pretty slim. I think something's got to go wrong. If Junior doesn't win, Ethel won't get a penny. She tells me that she picked that one because that's her son's name. I know all this already because it's in her file. He was named after his dad, Robert. Robert Junior. Well, before long, the Newcastle race is off. They're going a steady gallop in this big brute of a chestnut balls along in front. That's ours in the blue silk, Ethel. Oh, no, I hate it when they're out in front. Nonsense, dear. They've all got to pass him. I think a three-mile chase on heavy going is a long haul. He's bound to get tired on the running. One of the old dears is wandering along the corridor. She hasn't got a zimmer, so I take it out to her and make sure that she's OK. She says that she's looking for her mum. She died over 40 years ago. I tell her that she's just popped out of the shops and she'll be back soon. And that seems to settle her. When I get back in, Junior's still out in front. Ethel's up on her feet, dancing, shouting at the TV. I'm thinking, E, Ethel, don't have a fall. I haven't done a risk assessment for this. I go to support her, just in case. I shout, come on, Junior! And Ethel stops dead. Is my son here? I think, shit. Is he coming to take me home? Try to divert her. Your horse is called Junior. Look, he's still out in front. You might win. And she turns to the telly and I don't know where the sound came from, but she lets out this almighty roar and it seems to urge the horse over the final fence. Come on, Junior. Come on, my boy. Now, it's a canny running after the last fence at Newcastle, but he still seems to be going well. Howie, son, I'm screaming at the TV and I'm thinking, bloody hell, she might win this. How am I going to explain all the winnings to the boss? But do you know what? I don't care. Because Ethel grabs me hand and she's shouting at the TV and as Junior passes the post, she gives us a big hug. And I think, this is not about the money. This is so not about the money. She turns to me and she says, um, my son's not coming for me, is he? And for a moment, I can't lie to her. I should be saying, of course he is. He'll be back tomorrow. But she's looking into me eyes and 
she seems perfectly lucid as she says, it's okay. I don't mind. Because you're my daughter now. The daughter I never had. And I think, yeah, I suppose I am. <laughs>